is not a tool that we should leave in the hands of lawyers because the reality is law is created for all of us. It's really, it's our set of agreements as a society about how we want to live together, how we want to work together. And the legal profession itself has become really um, kind of fortified or inaccessible to most people. And it's also the least diverse profession in the United States and um, it's becoming less diverse. You should view law as a tool in your toolbox and that you don't have to use law on the terms that the legal profession or the legal system has set for you. In fact, probably better, you can start to challenge the way that the law has been used, challenge the way that people talk about the law. The cases recently that we've done and you may have heard of, we had a class action lawsuit against Donald Trump and Trump University uh, that we fought. <laughs> actions are tougher to kind of bring on your own. It typically is the type of case where you need to get a lawyer or a law firm involved. Um, but the best cases come from people like you who kind of know the facts, know the information, know what's misleading. And so I'd say if you have, you know, things that, that, that you think are, you know, improper, feel free to contact me or another a lawyer who specializes in class actions and, and we can look and see if it's it's something that, 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 that might work. Um, and then you can also, of course, you know, any letters or, you know, just letting agencies know or even the Better Business Bureau, the Attorney General for your state, all of those can have some impact. Esta es la razón por la que el maíz se ha convertido en el actor principal de dos modelos diferentes de producción en el mundo. El, pro, el modelo campesino y el modelo industrial. This is why corn has developed into two different worlds on the level of the, campus, of the farmers and on the level on the industrial levels. Y nos hemos organizado. Muchas organizaciones nos hemos juntado para formar estas redes como la campaña Sin Maíz del País. So many organizations have formed to create different networks that honor this with, with no, no maíz and if there is no country. Y en ese sentido es que en 2013 interpusimos una acción colectiva. And, and as a result of, in 2013, we did a class action lawsuit. Y eh, nuestra demanda es contra Monsanto, eh, Agrotau Science, eh, estas empresas y el gobierno mexicano. And our, our lawsuit is against Monsanto and our own government. Yes. And all of this. Y la gran noticia fue que el juez nos concedió esta medida cautelar. And the judge accepted our demand. Pero hasta ahora hemos ganado la mayor parte de las demandas de las grandes empresas. But until now we've won the majority of these battles against the bigger, bigger companies. You put organic stuff in landfills and you trap it in there without any air, it creates methane. And I've recently learned that methane is about four times worse than carbon, or anyways, it's way, way worse than carbon as far as, as greenhouse gases. So, so yeah, they're building up these gas bubbles in the landfill. So now the new, the new word is from the state of California, SB 1383, is, okay, never mind, never mind. All right, we have to get all of the organics out of landfills. So cities, so basically we're creating these mandates on cities to create systems to get all organics out of landfills. Here in Oakland, I made a list. This is not even a complete list of some of the creative ways that people are taking the organic matter and recycling it back into our soil. It's beautiful stuff. And um, a lot of urban farms, a lot of local food entrepreneurs involved. Um, that's the good news, is that it's happening. The bad news is it's all illegal. Everything on that list right there is illegal. Because here's what the Oakland Municipal Code says which is that it's unlawful for any person other than the licensed hauler in Oakland, which is, well, there's three of them, but the main one is Waste Management, a giant Texas-based corporation, biggest waste management corporation in the U.S., um, that only that corporation is allowed to collect and haul organic materials from any premise within the city. We can be out there actively shaping these laws, and so, as I was realizing how many different legal issues were coming up and how many different laws were being written at once, 
I mean, there's a lot just in California all at once. I couldn't even keep track of them. I said, all right, let's start having these monthly gatherings. We, we initially called it the Soil Policy Team, think we'd be, like, thinking it would be a sort of a group of people who get together every month uh, and sort of work through some steps toward doing some advocacy. Ultimately, it's become a little bit more like a party where every month somebody different comes and people are always coming in and out, different people are learning, but it has been a great experience. These soil policy parties, as we now call them, they still happen every fourth Wednesday. You're welcome to come. But even better, I would actually suggest doing something like this yourself because every city, like I said, is a little different. You need to be addressing it at the local level. But this is the formula <coughs> used for the soil policy parties, which is, um, we've been doing this since January. Uh, we, we had dinner. We have a little story time where we just sort of go around, anybody share any random interesting fact about soil, farming, compost, whatever they want to share. Uh, and then we do some kind of legal detective work. We've read Supreme Court cases, we've read statutes, we've given input on draft regulations, uh, we've actually brought a couple scientists in to help us understand science a little better, we've collected data. Um, so we do this kind of like legal hackathon, legal detective work, scavenger hunt type of activity, which is fun even for me as a lawyer, because I do this all the time. When I'm sitting in the room with other people and I'm reading a law, they'll see something different in the law that I did not see, and we, we just have insights right and left. Like I'm always like writing down all these insights during these parties that I had not actually gained myself, and people bring so much knowledge into the room, it's incredible, and everybody really should not only like vote in elections and participate in that way, but actually become an active creator, instigator of policy campaigns and to actively give input in policies as they're being made. Because, I, yeah, and this is kind of how I started. Law is not just this, you know, set of confusing words like putrescible. It's law is us. It is our agreement about how we want to live. And right now we need to make clear what is our agreement about what we want to do with life, life, organic matter, and the source of life, and the people who are best, um, best positioned to make the rules about life and organic matter are the people who are touching it every day, it's the farmers, the food entrepreneurs, and so on. Not lawyers, because I did not learn this stuff in law school. And really, there's a lot of different ways to be involved. We've We've actually had an impact simply by writing letters to regulators and saying, uh, can you change this thing or can you interpret this for us because it doesn't make sense. And we've actually tried to introduce leg legislation, we've opposed legislation, or helped amend legislation. There's sort of a, a variety of ways that you can get involved because if you're interested in being involved or interested in starting your own soil policy party or parties, this is the formula for it. Have dinner, it really helps. Just, you know, do something to make it fun, social. I think the nice thing about me having done these uh, for the last eight months, these soil policy parties, is I've really made a lot of new friends. Um, I've just like sharing a lot of fun stories together. And then like doing the research, learning on your own. Make, you know, if the laws are hard to understand, that's not your problem, that's the law's problem. That's something to fix. So just get into it, dig into it, do some problem solving with some friends. Um, freak out about it discuss, and then take action. And there's, like I said, so many ways to take action. And, um, and then do it again next month because, like I said, there are going to be a lot of laws coming down the pike that we need to be involved in. So that's my email address. If you email me, it might take me a little while to get back to you, but the reality is we're just getting started and trying to, in many ways, like build up a movement of people who are actively shaping compost law. So hopefully that will include you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.